thank you very much for this privilege to uh, present to you this program. It's called the Water for the Program, and uh, I will divide the small 12 minutes among two, two parts. In the first part, I will talk really on what do we do regarding the Water for Earth program. And in the second half, I will talk to you about how we did develop this total hybrid security index to measure the results of our data. I have made an attempt to make it bilingual for those who will read Spanish. I am sorry if it is confusing when you will start seeing this. Um, The first thing I have to point out is that we are not researchers, but we are practitioners. We are <laughs> working with farmers. And Mexico is divided by two main chains of mountains here. And where both of them join together is the region Mixteca. And because of the difficulty of access, it has been the most, the most backward of the region in our country. So we decided to work, to go and work here in this area. By the way, Maria presented also the Mixteca here in the Rio Verde. And we are working just on this neighboring side. You will find in yellow and red and English and quite in Spanish. We found, when approaching to the people, to the villages, we found that they were uh, expressing that they had uh, an accumulated natural resources deterioration for over centuries. And this decreased the development potential. And this increased the poverty. And this increased the pressure on natural resources. As we see here, the lady bringing wood on her back and buckets with what to bring water back home when they would finish when she would finish. Not knowing that because of destroying the vegetation protection, each year the water will be farther away. So this accelerated natural resources depletion, soil water, the vegetation and water, increased the accumulated deterioration of resources. So what we decided to do while talking to them, women, my wife was working with women, and they expressed that uh, they had lost many hours a day to fetch water. Secondly, that their uh, kids were getting sick very often. And then the doctors blamed the women because of this sickness on the children. And so men told me that their farming production was decreasing and that they were losing their crops partially or totally ten, seven out of every 10 years. So our decision was to make in investment, sorry, investment in ecological regeneration that will make a regional economic flow and circulation. It will not be a company working the, the, the works, but the people itself. Then we will keep soil and water in the area, and this will recharge the aquifer. And we will work with the people to keep the water courses clean. And then we will have the natural resources enrichment and biodiversity increase. And this will increase in productive potential and patrimonial value of the land of these farmers. And with all this, income growth and diversification will be uh, paramount. <laughs> this is the kind of work indigenous villages do for centuries. That it should be a barren creek, and here you see all these rock arranged sitting dams that will retain the soil and produce like a sponge that will be holding water and allow the farmers to 
have the drops in here, receiving also this, this seeping slopes here. And with our program, the water forward program, we have copied this way of thinking, and we do have these small dams, rock dams, but now with modern uh, materials, sand, modern engineering to decide which would be the best place to do this in order to recharge the aquifers. And I will not explain this, but it's just to say that we are working in the whole watershed, in all, all the land that when the water will flow, will come down to the same stream. For each particular site, there will be a particularly, uh, especially useful technology to be used for them. With this, what we do is aquifer and spring recharge. Every small sipping dam, a rock arranged dam, will create a flow down of the earth, of the, the aquifer, and when the rocks, the permeable rocks, will come in touch with the impermeable rocks, the water will flow into springs or water wells or whatever. This is to show how we, me we measure the <coughs> institutional capacity growth to do this. You can see here that in the first year we make one project, one dam. And after 20 years, 25 years of this program, we reach 1,000 waterworks in 260 projects every year. This means to be able to create three waterworks per day. That is only possible not if only you have the institutional capacity, but you, if you have translated this capacity to the villagers themselves, that they will be having their works on going process all over the year. And we have provided water to more than 2,000, uh, 200,000 inhabitants. On the social side, we measure how many visitors we receive at the Water Museum that it was established to share this vision of ecological regeneration. We have reached more than 54,000. And we have trained more than 100,000 people on this vision of regenerating uh, the watershed on the, on the assumption that its conservation is not enough. The land has been so damaged that we need to regenerate it. And now the second part. And I have four minutes to do that. This total security index was created, I have to confess, that it was because of the pressure of the sponsoring institutions that every time they pushed harder that it was no longer more important how much water do we provide to villagers, but how do we measure the water we were providing to the villagers. That was a shift because we said, sorry, I, I'm not a researcher, I am a, a social promoter of uh, regional development. But we had to design this index that will not put our institution away from social promotion, but being able to produce all these uh, figures. The, the, the first approach was, of course, the hydroecological balance that will identify and quantificate each stage of uh, rain, interception, uh, flowing, uh, in recharge, and uh, stopping the flow, and provide for agriculture, for animals and for housing. This is the, the visual framework of the index. To, well, of course, we are experts on this, but we, we understood that we needed an index defined as a characteristic value, <laughs> expressing a property, and in a quantitative form that you can track along the, 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 the years. 
In order to operationalize this, we decided to use the UN definition of human rights work. So this would be philosophical. And they stated in 2002, the human right to water is the right of everyone to have at least his or her disposal sufficient, clean, acceptable, accessible, and obtainable water for personal and domestic uses. We found that this definition was very complete and would make easy to develop the methodology. So we identified in this definition these components. The measuring of quantity, of the, how much water flows, and how much water reserve capacity you have in, in place, the quality of the, the water, the cost, the, and the supply certainty, even in the dry seasons that we are suffering now in Mexico, that we are uh, nine months of drought waiting for water. And in order to identify reels, we, we integrated the domestic as the most important for each one of us. And secondly, our village or locality, that we also want the people to have uh, water themselves so that we won't have social problems. And then the second will be the tributary watershed, then widening would be the soft watershed, and finally the large watershed that usually we don't care. It's so far away that we don't care. But we, we found most important to include it. Oh, again the, the Chinese one. It's the Maria. Again. <laughs> How did you manage to correct this? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry again. So I was, well, for those of you who are have a very good sign. It's the same formula here <laughs> that it was supposed to be here. Okay? This is just to, to present that how these components were arranged into a one formula that will provide an index that we will be able to follow year after year. Sorry, my time is over. And We just wanted to be precise in taking an, uh, an example with the initial qualification, my threshold, saying how much water does a person receives? Seven liters per person, 20 liters per person, that is defined by the Millennium Development Goals, or the 50 liters per person by the World Bank, or the 150 that is considered satisfactory by the World Health Organization. And we provide qualification for each one of these possibilities. And the other example would be the use of the Falcon Mark water stress indicator, that will be the largest one that will provide in cubic meters per person per year, available in each country, and we will also make a qualification for this. And this will provide then the different components of the formula, always putting the first element would be the quality and then multiplied by a factor of quality. And that's it. And the, another way to measure is how much society is interested in this, in this uh, process. And you can see all the different awards the Water Forever Program has received and especially this Initiativa Mexico Award that was received last year by these farmers for this, for this work. So thank you very much, and here is my contact.